if you want to be wealthy, it's going to take you some courage, if that's what you want to do. Saw something tonight and it pissed me off. And it got me to thinking, I'm not going to address that conversation. I'm going to address and give you my response to the mindset, because typically it doesn't really matter what people think. What matters is what they do. I saw this comment and I'm going to talk around the comment. People believe in false narratives. Now, if you want to become wealthy, chances are it's not going to take a month or two. It's going to take a decade or two. That's the reality. Um, being wealthy, earning wealth requires responsibility, commitment, and trust. Someone made a statement based upon a false narrative. And I, when I see that, it drives me crazy because you're speaking to me in a manner that makes me think you're stupid. Cam's coins, I'm a kid, how do I make money? You find a product or service that people will pay you for. This is something that people don't tell you about wealth building. We had this conversation with a client today and actually someone else early in the week. I don't have like traditional net worth. Um, and it makes a, a lot of sense because, you know, I've said this several times, my intellectual properties, all this stuff, this is in a trust fund for the kiddos, right? So I am not rich, but I have created wealth. How does that make sense? Because typically, and this is why a lot of this hustler porn is so short-sighted. People are amping up to get a lot of wealth very quickly to literally have options in their life, but sit down, not do much, go to the beach, you know, whatever they want to do. And they want to do it really, really fast. But the problem with that is it takes time to build these things that are durable. And also, if you want to get long-term wealth, like you can become a billionaire and never become married. Well, I shouldn't say becoming a billionaire is easy. It's easy to build something and not be married. Let's say that. Uh, becoming a billionaire is hard. If you want to create legacy, you got to have kids. I mean, if you go through history and if you look at all of the folks who are of historical note, virtually all of them have families. You know, some didn't get married and they still had kids. Um, you, it's just a common part of that legacy because if you're not building something for someone or some purpose that is much bigger than you, it's not a lot of motivation there. I mean, once you get your creature comforts, eh, you'll, you'll dial it back. Uh, you'll be like, I'm good. Uh, I was listening to some guys talk about that this guy's working on his business. He's finally at 150000 take home pay, and he's going in chill mode. Now, I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. What I'm saying is, once you get to that level, it's easier to ratchet up than it was from the zero to the 150. So you could be hurting yourself long term on what your email name, your passwords, that gets in your subconscious mind. So you should have positive, uplifting email accounts, passwords. It makes a difference. So we got the rap box, formerly virtual input. Family isn't a demon. Well, bad family's a demon, but family's not a demon. I started investing in silver. Good for you. Family's a motivation to be free. Oh, shoot, four, five, eight. Let me go ahead and give you some, some serious directions. I think that people become better parents after 30. So I think you should be building your life, building your business, traveling the world, doing whatever you want to do between 16 and 30 because you can't get those years back. Things are not going to, things are just different. So yeah, you know, I'm not saying like run out and have kids right now. I'm saying that in terms of building wealth and creating certain things, that less than pie. I think we create our own demons, our own scapegoats, and our own excuses. I think that plays a big part in it. I really do. Typically, that works better, less than pie, when you start showing your kids. I went to this Asian restaurant. I had this picture, if I could find it. And I took a picture because the owner of the restaurant had his kid running the credit card machine. So he was getting that business knowledge real early. You know, I'm talking about building wealth. Like, here's two things. And I'm going to say some stuff that's going to be offensive. It is hard for white people to become millionaires. It's hard. And the system is more geared toward that persuasion, right? So you know, for everyone else, it's really hard. And I see all this stuff about becoming a millionaire. It's like, why do you want to become a millionaire? So I have money. Why do you want to have money? So I can do what I want. Why aren't you doing what you want now? Because I don't have money. And that's really bullshit because you could do what you want with less money. What can you do for you want with less money? What do you mean by that? Okay, good question, Matthew. Doing what you want requires for you to know what you want, right? 
Now, I use myself as an example, and a lot of people have done this. Uh, there's lots and lots of examples. I wanted to be a writer, and I shaped my life to make that happen because, one, the traditional thing is writers don't make a lot of money. I didn't fucking care. I just wanted to be a writer. So I shaped everything and prepared myself to be a writer. And lo and below, when I got to that situation, and, and when I started, and let's be clear, when I started, I wasn't making any money, but I was doing what I wanted because I prepared, prepared to do what I want. Like, let's say you are 25, you don't have much money, maybe you're living with your parents, maybe you have roommates, and there's this thing that you want to do. I have this saying, there are people who talk about what they want to do, and there are people who do what they want to do. You can do what you want to do, but you can do it on a smaller level and work your way up with the understanding of it's going to take time. One of the reasons that I've been so on it with the hustler porn is that you have many people who think that they can earn $100,000 income, million dollar income in a matter of weeks and months with no experience. They are really believing this bullshit. And what's happening is if it doesn't happen, there's something wrong when the average millionaire who makes a million dollars collectively from zero to one million takes 11 years. And I know that this is the internet and things move a little faster, but um, uh, Glendon, what are your thoughts on publishing books through CreateSpace to creating your own platform? I can actually tell you. CreateSpace works like this, and it's really great if you have traffic. If you have a website, you can have traffic. You can use CreateSpace as a distribution system where people order, you go to CreateSpace, and you ship the stuff out. Using CreateSpace in their little funky websites, nobody finds it. No one finds it. You've got direct traffic to that website, but it looks funky and nobody's like, what is this? So yeah, you 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 pay less money if someone buys the book from the Create Space site, but nobody's going there. I think it's a waste of time. I think that we will get back on wealth. It doesn't matter what platform you use. Uh let me let me show you something since I got tools. Even visual aids are just really, really good. And let's go to products. Come on, come on, come on. All right. So here are my products in Gumroad. And I would have not made these sales, right, if I didn't have traffic. So it doesn't really matter. Now, Gumroad does have a marketplace, and I've gotten a few referrals. But typically, it is that you're, you know, like CreateSpace. If you use it like I did, and I'll actually tell you how I used it, you gotta have you, you gotta have the traffic. You gotta have the traffic, or you just won't make any money. So this is what I did. And you know, a lot of people were like making jokes. You y'all better buy those books. glenn has got all those books in his garage. I didn't have any books in my garage. I was using Create Space as a drop shipping type deal. Someone would wake up in the morning and you know, I would collect my orders. I was like through the night, people because you know, for those of you who have e-commerce sites and sell stuff online. Did you do you seem to notice that most people seem to buy at night? Like between the hours of 11 and 2 o'clock in the morning. That happened for years. Now that I'm doing these live streams where you buy certain things, and I need to go ahead and throw this in there. For those of you who want that action pack, how to be a boss, I'll go back over it in a little bit. Um, for those of you who have e-commerce websites and stuff, when do most of your orders come in? I just noticed that I used to have a lot of them at night. But this is, I use Create Space just like drop shipping. Uh, I wake up, I would print up my invoices and stuff, and I would go to Create Space and order the book because they would make it on demand and ship it to whoever bought it. Uh, I could tell you the numbers. I would spend anywhere from four bucks to seven books, and that in, seven bucks at the time, that included shipping on books that were like, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 bucks. And sometimes people would buy two or three of them. I get why you created the intellectual property online business, way less overhead, low capital. Actually, that wasn't the reason. Let me let me tell you the reason. And you know, a lot of you heard the story before. Years ago, years ago, I used to work in a place called Northside Hospital. Curtis Mayfield was one of our patients. And if you know the story, you can Google it. He was paralyzed from the neck down from a stage accident. And I watched this man who was paralyzed from the neck down support his family with his creative property. And we had a conversation because he was a super, super nice guy. He was really nice. I mean, for someone to be in that kind of position and be in pain and can't take care of themselves, 
he had the best spirit. So he told me stuff and I, I see this man laying on the bed and he's like, oh, yeah, if Ice Cube wants 15 seconds, that's 25,000. If someone wants this, um, I'm going to show you who he was because I've talked about it. And for you young heads, y'all probably don't know who he is. But since he helped me out so much, I mean, seriously, he was one of those people that because I've saw him several times. This is just like it wasn't a one time deal. And let's go ahead and show you who Curtis is give you a little history on it oh i'm clicking the wrong thing i'm sitting there like why isn't it working you you've heard his music i'm your pusher man uh, a lot of 60s 70s songs uh he did many many things and uh like i said he he, he spent a lot of time well you know we're taking care of him and he like i said he was a really chatty fellow and he told me so much about intellectual property so many things and one thing that he said is if you ever create any 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 if you ever create any intellectual property, never ever sell it, lease it. And this is what Disney does. And if you go check out my video, how to create passive income for real, that's kind of on that tip. And you know, uh, there are people who watch the video and they be nutting up. It's like, oh, I gotta create something. Yeah, motherfucker, you gotta put in some work. I'm all this. I do nothing. I spend no time on it, and I make all this money. That's just not real. It's just not real, and I, it just drives me crazy. But you know, Curtis was like a super cool dude. Check him out, listen to his music, buy some albums, uh, you know, because that's going to his family. And like I said, he he helped me out tremendously. So that's what got me into. I was already writing before I met him, and it just crystallized it because I always wanted to do stuff like this. And there's more stuff that's coming in 2017. Y'all are going to flip your wigs when this stuff starts coming. It's just one of the things I've learned in business is if you got a situation or a problem, you need to fix it before you move to something else. YouTube changed the rules. So I had to roll with the flow and I finally figured out what I need to do. But this is just me being me. Um, if I hadn't got sick, if my partner hadn't developed cancer and died, probably still be in the storage auction business. So I looked at this time when I was recovering as a way to do something because, you know, I'm not one to sit around and do nothing. I get bored. I mean, I get real bored because the uh, physical product business is coming back. <laughs> it's just not I'm going to have help. And there's there's all kinds of stuff. Let's see. Whoa, 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 whoa. I've noticed the late night buyers at 3 a.m. Benjamin. Yeah, I, I've just for years and years. I talked to other people in other groups and they said the same thing. Also, they are driven by sales on new software launches and updates. Uh, nope, no experience with Lulu. Uh, Mark Shapiro, my eBay orders come in during the day on weekends and evenings during the week. Well, most of my sales were North America. I didn't have a lot of international sales with the storage auction Craigslist stuff at that time. Now, stuff is kind of around the clock, but it wasn't like that for years. So, Lisa, I'm a night owl. That's, night owl is usually when I order. Uh, Tiger Shops was at GDC last year, and the games industry has totally figured out when people buy apps down to the time of day. That's dope. Uh, Roosevelt, I've done the same with Create Space. Some, I'm doing some research on other methods that you've shown here. Thanks, Glenda. Sure. What's up, Glenda? Yes, it's the weirdest thing. I get most of my orders while I sleep. Another thing, I get, I get a gang of orders at one time. I'm going to tell you a little dirty story in a minute. This goes years, years, years back. But like with building wealth, it's a time thing. And if you sit down and say, I'm building wealth for this bigger thing, it gives you more energy. It's like pouring more fuel in your tank, right? Where if you're just like, I want to get rich so I can like get a better sexual partners or live in a swank condo with no real projection for the future, um, you're going to run out of motivation at some point unless you just like playing the game, which a lot of people do. Now, let's see. What else? Superfly, that's right. Conscious soul singer of the 70s. Curtis was an intellectual that spoke musically. Yep. Okay. So y'all know who Curtis is. I met the man. Great dude. Now here's the dirty story. This is going to go back to what Rugged Collar said about multiple orders. There's a parallel. In the G-verse, there's a parallel between sales and dating. A lot of people say, no, nah, they're all different. And I was like, yeah, they are different. They're the same. Um, a long, long time ago when I used to date multiple women at the same time, they would all start texting at the same time. Like at night, you're texting. You would be, ha I would be having literally three to four conversations at the same time, and 
if I started the conversation with one during the day, they would all start texting at the same time. I was like, what the hell is this? Which made me very efficient because I have messed up twice, two times. And it was big mess ups where I text the wrong person, the wrong thing. And it was just like, who the fuck are you talking to? Well, I'm talking to this person. Oh, and not just me. I'm out. And I said, okay, that's one less person I have to text. Okay, just, I mean, it, it was crazy. But it's funny how humans seem to do certain things. Like sometimes when I'll do a lunch, I'll get 10 orders like bam, 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 bam on the same hour. And I'm just like, how does that happen? But that's that's your dirty story for the night. Let's see. Uh, Curtis, let's see. evening, Raquel. What's up, Josh? What's up, Phil Moore? Curtis Mayfield was like Bill Withers, the Hectorex. Uh, no. AKWB says so basically what I do. I lease my beats to music artists and other businesses who want to use the hip hop music money forever. Yep. Only the Madden Price in my web stores are watching this. I can't wait to make money while I sleep. Uh, Super Ant, he was a savage, a fucking brute on the faith to fight for what he wanted, brave enough to go to war for what he deserved. So, did he do war? Let me look that up real quick because it's on my mind and I want to say war. So, war by Edwin Starr. Okay, let me check because sometimes you check the line of notes. Let's see, war, Edwin Starr. Who wrote that? Who wrote war? I want to know this. See, you know, thanks for y'all hanging out with me as y'all indulge my little curiosity. Who wrote? Yeah, who wrote that? Because Edwin sung it. Um, Norman Whitfield and Barrett Strong, they wrote it. Okay, and now I know that curiosity has been solved. All right, is there a reason that you don't give specifics on what you do? The aim is to be sold, not told. I always want to say, I give you specifics. What do I have to sell? I mean, I'll be brutally honest with you. Like, what do you want specifics on? Because when I get this, because I understand that women, you know, I'm not being sexist, but women do process information differently because typically most reading is done by women, especially romance of. Uh, a lot of reading is done by women, most. Uh, Iron, I'm fresh out of prison, new to the internet as a whole, just looking for a legit hustle. Okay, here's my advice to you. Get a job if you can, or if you can't get a job, go to the channel, look up how to start a service business and find something you can do to create your own job. Here's the thing that the hustle porn people don't tell you. If you're brand new to the internet and nobody knows who you are and they don't care about what you have, it is fucking hard to make money online. You got to have traffic. You don't have traffic. You can have the best website in the world, right? You can have the best products in the world, right? You can have a, all this good stuff, but with no traffic, there is no money. No money. That business will bore the shit out of you, drive you crazy, and you'll stop doing it. So, like, you know, specifics is, you know what? Do this. Uh, I, Iron, do this. Go to the channel and just every day start watching the business videos. There are playlists, there are tagged, just start watching. That's going to give you a lot of direction. Uh, all those damn Christmas songs, their families are still getting paid. Yeah, I mean, okay, here's, here's some stuff. I'll just kind of go way back and let you know my family history. My grandfather owned a barbershop, and my grandfather's name was Sumner Camner, Cameron. My grandmother's name, Maddie Cameron. She was a teacher. She actually had a degree. You know, when we used to see those you know, old college, you know, Negro college fun commercials, demote, you know, with the kids crying and shit. My grandmother actually had a degree. She taught me to read. So there were business peoples and stuff. And then my grandfather was married to Catherine, who was my uncle's mother. She died. And that's why he married my grandmother, Maddie. And they had my mother. I saw bits and gaps of what certain things can happen in terms and then when my grandmother died shit just shit fell apart so because she was the rock of the family she had the money she had all the stuff coming in so everything just kind of fell apart after she left so it went from somewhat of a middle class uh lifestyle to abject poverty <laughs> and i just learned that you know because i look into my grandmother some other stuff when you do certain things for the future generations, it's a different motivation. If you just do stuff for yourself, which is not wrong, it's just you don't get as much. 
You just don't. Matthew, what's the best way to get traffic and attention? Create content. You want to publish. See, this is another thing I learned over the years because I've been doing this. This is my ninth year. The more shit that I put out in terms of content, videos, the more money I make. But there has to be a pattern. There has to be a structure. Tiger, George Michael, Last Christmas. You know what's funny about a lot of those artists like George Michael? He may not even own that song. He may not be getting any money. Erwin, thanks for that respectfully. Sure thing. Because if you are just like coming out of your situation, there's opportunities. You may just be better off creating your own job because, you know, it's funny when you go up to someone's door. Hey, I'm here to power wash your window or they don't ask you about your references. Like, you know, when you get the job, it's, it's kind of interesting. Hey, Ron, do you think Craigslist is a good way to advertise your service business? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Now, with the wealth thing, it, it takes courage because the comment that I will not mention was dripping in false narratives right of what you should do and all this other stuff that i just don't believe in and i realized how many people are set in that mode where they don't have the courage to do what they need to do because i remember some you know i went to see my partner she just actually this was about a year before she got sick and she said, you're the most courageous person I know. And I was like, why? Because you would try all this wild ass scheme when other people would give up. And I was like, hmm, okay, I'll take that as a compliment. I don't know what kind of mood you're in, but you're going to fail. Okay, here, here's the real truth about business. You're going to fail. Shit's going to fuck up. People are going to lie to you. People are not going to pay you. All kinds of crazy shit's going to happen. Um, there will be chargebacks. There will be bad reviews. This is going to happen. And if you're a weak person, you're not going to make it because there's stuff's coming at you. I don't care if your product was on a truck and there was a fire on the highway. It's your fault. And they're going to blame you, hold you accountable, not the fool that set the fire. So you got to have courage to get started. And you're not going to get wealthy saving. You're going to have to be wealthy. You're going to have to get wealthy. Actually, the true definition of wealth is what you've accumulated and what you manufacture not how much money you earn that's why a lot of people are high income earners but they're not wealthy that's the dark side being a breadwinner and a visionary for the family if you get if you're really good and you create a lot of stability your family gets comfortable when you die the vision dies yeah there that does happen should anyone do live stream to spread your message to help more people? If you're going to do live streams, I suggest you do not do YouTube unless you already have a bunch of subscribers. I suggest you start on Facebook. They're still giving a lot of people juice right now because if you do live streams and you don't, because see, <clears throat> I, I see people coming in and popping in. They'll see us live and they'll pop in and they'll pop out. <clears throat> but if you don't have an audience, you could start building one. But in the beginning, it's just like I said, I mean, I, I had like 20 people when I started a few months ago and we're like a 78. It's slow because it goes up like five people here, then four people. Then it kind of goes down a little bit, then it goes go up. And if I was talking to a client today and it's like, I enjoy that shit. So if there's just 10 of us here, we're going to have a good time. So you got to have that other stuff going on, because if you're looking at the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, you're going to lose your mind. Lamo, Pimp and Craigslist book is great. Just finish it and took action. Cool. Appreciate it. So smart family visionaries try to set up trust, yes, or entities that after they die to provide and protect for her family. Uh, my business partners, sis, how are they related? Well, essentially, this chick manages Maynard Jackson's trust for his kids. And she was just kind of telling us the checks they get. And Maynard's been gone a long time. And these folks have been getting some serious checks from the stuff he set up years ago. I have a moving and delivery service just trying to make easier money. Okay. <clears throat> what are you talking about? You, you got a moving? All right. What you need to do is learn how to become a manager. Okay. Any business can make you rich. Okay. Where most people fall apart is they don't have structure. They don't have systems. And they are the business. Guilty. I've done that. So... What you want to do since you have a company is you want to put in systems processes and start training people to free you up. Because I take it since you're saying easier money, you're doing the donkey work. You're doing the hard work. You can hire people for that.
uh roscoe i was thinking about the sexual instruction video market not porn but sexual instruction hey it's a huge market let's see come on all right my thing so true i used to braid hair and sing in the core i couldn't count the number of customers church friends who got their hair done with me a promise to pay that actually never paid I stopped doing work for my mom's church. They blamed all the world's ills on video games. They didn't even have a website. Went back recently, and they had gone totally high tech. <laughs> uh, D. Jelani, I want to start the inbound marketing in January. I don't mind the slow start. Should I still build? Still, I should still build on YouTube. What's your product? What's your service? I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Uh, Mayna had a financial come, mainly dealing with municipal bonds. It's still paying out decades later. Most of you, I'm doing the hard work and it's definitely wearing me thin. <laughs> 1 800 got junk. Thinking about drop shipping luxury items on eBay and uh, eBay and the website. What do you think would be the setbacks? Don't have any money, much money for uh, inventory or much money. Okay. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some real elitist here. If you're not in the luxury market, I suggest you don't sell luxury products. I know. Uh, you know, you're supposed to say that and here's why i was having a friend lunch with a friend today and we were talking about it um he lives in my old neighborhood and i was just telling the differences and if you're in georgia the old neighborhood was dunwoody new neighborhoods chastain park area dunwoody is a bunch of well-to-do people high income earners houses are three to five okay you come over here houses are four to millions and the conversation is so different. If you want to sell luxury products to the luxury market, market with people who have that disposable income, you got to know those people. You got to get to know them. Uh, recently, a cafe opened up by a guy who lives in the neighborhood, and he knows his people. He knows how to cater to them, and they're doing very well. So just going out and getting, quote, luxury products and not knowing the market is dangerous and a quick way to go broke. And you're going to need some money to play that game. You will need some money, and I'm talking six figures minimum. Um, I, you know, like that's a service business. If you have good traffic, if you're someplace like a college where kids keep breaking their phones, yeah. Alan, I'm leaving videos to struck my family. Exactly what I'm doing. They don't believe the internet marketing net can work. Can work, but businesses take time to build. Don't comprehend the word quick. Uh, th that's another thing with wealth. I realized that. For me, and I actually told my daughter this, we're starting a new branch on the family tree. We're starting a new family tree because you cannot remix bullshit. You cannot remix dysfunction. You just can't. So at some point, you have to go, that was that. It was. I can't do nothing to change it. All I can do is from this point forward, do things differently, do things better. I've got a real honest relationship with my daughter because I, you know, we I'm like, I tell her the truth. Like all this stuff where chicks are running up. I was like, don't you be running up on some dude talking about you're a chick and you got in his face. You've assaulted him. You invaded his space. But for some reason, he needs to respect you. That's crazy. Don't do that shit. And, you know, a lot of people don't tell their kids that, especially if they're females. It's just, oh, if someone touches you with this whole notion of like, if you got some responsibility, you're on your own. That was kind of one of the things when I was growing up. There's like if you did something fucked up, if you were a girl or a boy. You caught the plane. It was real interesting how that made everyone behave better. I don't know why things have changed. True stuff. I hate trying to sell high end shit. Gives me one plus items a day. It is. It's a different market, man. It's a very different market. Things that, like the Walmart model, is totally different because Amazon is the Walmart of online. They do a lot of the same stuff, except Amazon was serving a more high-end customer for a longer period of time but now they're doing a lot of walmart stuff because this christmas i didn't really buy any i didn't buy anything on amazon for christmas presents nothing they didn't have what i wanted i have an online clothing store and i want to use inbound marketing to build awareness that's not going to work let's go ahead how do people buy clothes trendy they like to try them on you got to go through the whole things now apparel is a big big market online i think it's like 32 billion or something like that plenty of money but 
high returns because clothing is weird everybody's not designed the same so you're gonna have to get with the people on how that works naso why do people announce that they're going to do and the majority will not do just freaking do it i've learned over my 52 years no need to announce shit. just do it Shh. see there that's that that's that old that's that that old gangster like i mean seriously it's like the people who i'm quitting facebook remember when that was a phase hey y'all i'm gonna take six months off like no one cares that your ass is disappearing oh you left for six months i didn't know there's you know people would announce just for attention they weren't announcing to actually do anything so you're right i know nothing about day trading i know nothing about day trading and day trading i i used to date someone and i'm gonna actually tell you her why she was successful she's very very successful day trading now here's the thing her mom and dad had money then she married a guy and they built a real estate company then unfortunately he died so she was she had millions and she day traded for her money to blow and to buy stuff for her kids and not have guilt because she was raised very conservatively so she started off with a with a million dollars and you know she sat there because i remember whenever she was trading i couldn't talk to her between 10 and 2. I guess that's, those were her hours she did not leave her house she did nothing she said i don't even go to the bathroom because i can go to the bathroom and some shit can go sideways just that quick so i just sat there and sometimes used to watch her trade and stuff like this and typically people with money who come from money seem to do better at this i i, I know it's kind of crazy because she was schooled in money and she bought the right stuff so if you're gonna day trade understand that parlay game yeah some people do it most people don't uh listen to one of my ways to the higher playing plantation y'all cracking me up with that stuff but typically with creating wealth it's a process somebody's got to say i'm gonna do something like earlier today was talking about uh alan craft the owner of the patriots buying the patriots was not about money for him he in his heart of hearts wanted to bring championships to his city because he grew up a die hard sports fan i would say that us in the South were not the sports fans of people on the East Coast or Detroit or Chicago. Those folks are nuts. So that's why he bought that. It, it was just a different motivation because, you know, he could say, I gave my city something I didn't have when I was a kid. Once again, another reason he's wealthy. He was a visionary and he was forward thinking. He did stuff for now. And he did stuff for later. Uh, it, it's, it gets to be really, really interesting. Now, one of the reasons that I use race, because, you know, somebody was saying I was going to get shut down for telling the truth about certain things last night, is you have to look at groups. Because from my study, there is a number of white people who are positioned, whether they have a degree or not, for wealth due to the legacy of what grandfather or grandmother or somebody did a generation or two before i live I, I used to know these two people who both got cars at graduation so then they have a car note and then they had this family house where people got the house for five years to get themselves together no car payment no mortgage no rent now ask yourself how would your life be if you didn't have any of those bills yeah it makes a difference it makes a difference I was told if you cannot afford to lose 100,000 in the first weeks, you should not be, you, you will not be able to be a successful day trader. Um, she lost money, but she really didn't do crazy stuff. She didn't lose nothing. I mean, she had a day where she went up 20 and she came down 10, but she just balanced out. Um, risk management, risk management is trading. <laughs> risk management is trading. So that, those are other stuff, but somebody's got to go ahead and say, I'm going to do something for people bigger than me. Uh, there are people who created foundations or organizations for folks they don't even know. Uh, there are people who built parks for little kids they've never seen. There's a lot of really good people in the world, a lot. And if you start becoming one, you become, start becoming more service oriented, you'll be amazed at how much more money comes in your life. 
more people you serve, the more people, money you will make. But there are many people who, and this is one of the reasons I got out of a lot of Facebook groups. It was always, how can I get the most for the least? And I didn't want to be around those people because that shit's contagious. It's just contagious. I saw stuff and I'm just sitting there like, wow. And I got a name, you know, I got a channel named Hustlers Kung Fu and people think I'm a gangster. You're the real gangster. Dude was talking about uh, email them until they bleed. I mean, he was vicious with it. So it gets to be very, very intriguing on building wealth. Now, one of the things that I have learned is what helped free me from conventional lifestyles is a business. Now, once it's hard, it's hard. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, it's so easy. No, no, no. It's, it's hard. There's a lot of shit you're going to go through. But by the same token, there's a lot of shit you're going to go through with a job. I mean, right now, when I had jobs, they were more stable, more secure. It seemed like there were more rules in place. Now, there's, there's this pension bubble. There's a lot of companies that are going to renege on their promise to pay a lot of seniors pensions. That's going to create a lot of harm to a big to a bunch of vulnerable people. That's coming. So it gets interesting. Uh, Francesca Inc. I like that. That would be nice. But starting from nothing makes me want to financially secure future generations so they don't start from nothing to uh, 26. I remember I was doing a video and this girl, I actually talked to her and she was just so hurt. She's like, where are the mentors? You know, and I'm like, you know, we'll talk to her and pretty much knew what she had went through. And it, it's just it's hard, man. It's just hard because I look what I went through and I had mentors. I did have, I would think I had a better environment where there were a bunch of men who had jobs or a bunch of men who went to work. Um, there was just, I saw that growing up and you got a lot of kids who don't see that anymore. They don't really see that. Okay, people giving out books. Yeah, the pension thing makes me want to make my own money. No payments, Dave Ramsey style. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, someone, I gave this to someone today. For you folks who are Christians and you're dealing with this healthcare thing, and I, if you're a Christian, there are these medical, it's like medical bill crowdsourcing. It's really beautiful. It's been around a long time. You can join these groups and you make your tie for offering and you get sick. They pay your medical bills. Check it out. For you folks who are freaking out because you got to get your own insurance, because I talked to someone today, his insurance bill is 1800 bucks for his family per month, and they got like a $7,000 deductible. And he's like, last year, we only paid our deductible. That's our injuries or whatever. It came right up to the deductible. And he was like, I would have been better off keeping the twenty thousand dollars and just paying the deductible because he said we paid twenty seven thousand dollars for health care and only use seven thousand so he's kind of struggling with that so he is a christian and i pointed him over there he was very grateful yeah uh let's see matter of fact for you folks oops hold on hold on hold on let me put the offer in there let's see let's see someone said it wasn't okay the link that i'm putting in the stream works just fine all right so i'm just going to go over here to facebook and i'm going to share this with y'all because you know that's what we do here we're about service uh let's see let's see where it is where where is it because this is the thing matter of fact i'll just show it to you okay because people be like oh man because i know if i put this up here and people come after and they'll be watching it there's just go to Christian Healthcare Ministries. Just go to the website. I'm gonna leave it up here for a minute. If you're a Christian, you know, and I'm not a Christian, that's why I don't do it. But I'm not a Christian. If you're a Christian and that's your faith and you're for real about that, this can save you a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, a lot of money. Uh, I know people who have done it and they're very happy with it, but they're true Christians. They they do, they walk the walk, they talk the talk. And they are doing very well with this program. So there it is. 
because you know i get a lot of people's like you know what about health insurance and i'm just going to tell you it's going to be expensive as shit if you're self-employed let's see jobs are so unstable now that i'm starting my business is a must very interesting shirt so i'll buy one yeah, I've been, t I've been hearing about that. And this is another reason that you want to get wealthy because, okay, I'm going to give you a, a few stages here after I read these comments. Obamacare is no joke. Higher out-of-pocket costs for individuals who own the business or don't get insurance from their job. Hustling by necessity. Coming from humbly beginnings, I find it difficult to even come up with ideas where I find a mentor. Most of the people I know came from similar backgrounds, stable job that they hate or tolerate. Okay. Coup two, two three ten. This is what you do. Stop looking for mentors. Okay, I want you to read my lips. Stop looking for mentors. Find something that you want to do and start doing it. Find something that you want to do, start doing it, and then your energy will attract the right people to you. One of the reasons you're struggling because you ain't doing shit. You're just sitting there hoping, wishing, wanting somebody to mentor you. Uh, here's the thing with mentoring. Mentoring is a relationship. It's a relationship, and relationships take time, trust, and commitment. So you want someone to come over, give you time, trust, commitment, invest in you, and you ain't doing shit. Because I'm being frank with you, because if you were doing shit, you would not have a problem finding mentors. I've never had a problem finding mentors. I've never had to look for one. I'll just start doing shit and I run into people and I was like, well, I'm doing this. Blasey, 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 blasey. Oh, well, let me get, hook you up with my boy, John. He, he's, you got to get busy. <laughs> you got to break that. Jer, Jer, Jeriah, how do you stay hungry and consistent after you see first results in business? What do you mean first results? You think tax breaks for health care premiums are coming? If you own a company, there's already tax breaks. Made it home safe. You're cracking me up. Why would you not want to have the freedom of working for us like Walmart? <laughs> Late to the party, but I'm getting the scraps. I mean, the whole thing is there are so many ways to create service to humanity. Stop thinking million dollars. Stop thinking billion dollars. Start thinking millions of people you can serve. The more people you can serve, the more money you're gonna make. This is one of the reasons that I like this YouTube thing and this online thing, because if you hit those right algorithms and just phew, hit a bunch of people, amazing stuff happens. That's exactly why I started this new channel. Find your audience and you'll find customers. Everybody buys something. Irvin Thomas, have you heard the, about the movie founders? You mean the 26 people who decide most of the movies that we watch because they have all the cash? Yeah, I heard about them years ago. Do what you like, attract your client. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's how you get the kind of your mentors because you start a service business, then you'll start attracting other service business owners or people. It, it, it's, it all starts with action. The law of attraction, there's nothing. The law of attraction comes after the law of action. Simple test here for all my fellas, you know, since most of the people watch this. And this is, you know, this is nighttime. The kids should be in bed. But if you as a man have the courage to walk up to 10 women and not be this crude and say, I want to fuck you, if you're just like, I find you extremely beautiful and I want to make mad, passionate love to you or whatever works for you. If you've got the courage to say to 10 and you know how to read body language, you won't even get to 10. Average dude can't ask for pussy. They hint around with it. They're like, well, you know, you know, yeah, yeah. They don't say, you know, I don't want to fuck you. They don't say that. They just hint around and go home frustrated, walking sideways. Like she doesn't see that I'm a good guy. She doesn't care if you're a good guy. She wants a she wants a man. <laughs> oh man, I just thought about something. <clears throat> <laughs> it's about the people who started um uh it's about the people who started McDonald's. Oh, what's up, Cartel MOB? <laughs> God, say it again. 
<laughs> I'm serious. Someone bet me to do that, and I cheated because I already had isolated. Someone was looking at me, and I just went over there and we left. But yeah, that that whole thing. Uh, when I started, it was 10k saved and invested. Then 10k is 50k invested, net worth 50k paid. What messes up most people with that big short is they're trying to live off that money and use that money for the business, and it's trying to like feed two hungry people, and that's the reason a lot of folks can't scale. That's so true. Most dudes are afraid. Lawrence D. Adams. I I'm serious. I've seen it. When I go out. I see guys like this looking, and then she look, and look down. They look down. It, it's it's hilarious. <laughs> Very afraid. <laughs> uh, here in fall, oh, it makes so much sense about thinking the people you serve instead of the money you're going to make. Yeah, because the see, money is a byproduct of service. You just you know you, you see all these people. I'm going to be a rich. I'm going to be the boss. I'm going to make a lot of money. There's no product. There's no service. There's no direction. There ain't nothing. It's just I want to make a lot of money, right? It ain't gonna work. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell her how much I feel, right? Naso, you making jokes? But I didn't want to. I, I didn't want this video flagged because I was gonna call. I had one. I was just gonna say. Sometimes you just gotta grab them by the pussy. Uh, they, just grab her by the pussy works for some. Absolutely. Okay, let's stop. Let's pause. He said that, and a lot of women voted for him. Connect those dots. There's a lot of women who were not offended at all that he said that. You, all right, I'm just going to give it to you. I'm going to give you really rough and rugged. You're going to get way more pussy being an asshole and a brute than you will be the nice guy with flowers. You don't even have to take a bath. It's like, Oh, he's a caveman. Woo, me so horny. Yes, I don't touch that money. Eh? It's so crazy how that work I did it in college. <laughs> Irvin, because most people are broke and can't pay for drinks. It works for Tic Tac chomping billionaires. Damn, I never heard that one. Mommy motivation so true. I am more aggressive than my husband, but you get what you go after. Just saying, call me boy, girl, boy, if you want. I mean, it's it's simple biology. I just came up with that a long time ago. Uh, Kiva, keyboard Brown, Glenn, I'm broke. What's your cheapest course? Wrong question. This is what you do, keyboard keyboard Brown. You go to Hustlers Kung Fu the channel and you start watching the playlist. You go to how to start a service business, which is free. You follow the instructions. You can start a business and you won't be broke no more. All for free. That's the service I provide. I got nothing but love. See, digital hug. Digital. Everybody get in, in that dick. Ah, yeah, you got the digital hug. New broke, never broke. He said it and became president. Success leaves crews. I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, it, it's just uh, sometimes we make humans to be more complicated than they really are. You know what the two biggest things that women want? Security and comfort. And if you you can bring that however it takes, if you're a nuggle dragon Neanderthal. <laughs> oh, look at his hump. Oh, Quasimoto, your eye is wheezing. Let me get that for you, boo. Women like Home Depot projects. Trust me on this. I've seen too many. But, you know, with the whole thing of building wealth is really about having a mission of service. And you t if you could teach your kids that, because, OK, I, I, every time I say this, I get people leaving these comments, which I still leave. Trump's your hero? No, it's not my hero. But I respect the game. I respect success. And how they became rich is they served a lot of fucking people. They did. You know, I, I'm not going to like, oh, because he did this. He, he. I'm not one of those people that if you do one bad thing, like, you know, these people who like if someone's got like one bad toe, right? 
Oh shit, his toe's bad. It's the pinky. Let's throw the whole motherfucker out. Let's now they gotta go. That bad toe has corrupted the whole body. Huh? Chop off the bad toe, and the other ninety nine percent of the person is still there. So I t- I respect success. I respect results, regardless who gets it. I think I can learn from anybody, and I don't get caught up in that other stuff. Home Depot, <laughs> Home Depot projects they control better. Tonight, yes, this is night. We'll get into more dirty stories. This actually fits really well into the conversation. How did I think about it? Stating this girl when it's a storage auction business, right? She didn't know how much money I made. And she was a trust fund baby, right? Some stuff was going down. She was actually going through this state, and I was able to help her and everything. But she, for some reason, made the assumption that I had no ends. It could be because I was a store auction dude and I looked like a bum most of the time. That probably had a lot to do with it. So she was trying to turn me into a Home Depot project. Um, one day I'm at her house and she just comes up to me and grabs my hand and slaps it down. And I look, there's a key to her house. I didn't ask for it. And I was like, what's this for? Because I'm tired of letting your ass in. Okay. Then another thing and another thing It's like after a particularly good night of sex why don't you move in with me you're always here (laughs) i was like oh no 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 we're not doing this no she never went to my house and um there was a reason for that but it was real interesting because she was trying, I was just like, and then when I said, no, I'm not doing that, she fucking lost it. She completely lost it. I mean, she went psycho, but there's a part two of that. I don't know if I'm gonna tell that story, but it doesn't fit the nice narrative. But you know, she had generational wealth. Uh, her people did right by her and it enabled her to live a lifestyle that was far higher than her income, way higher. Cause people are like, girl, how did you get this house? Oh, I just work. Bullshit. Your father hooked you up. Let's see. Being nice gets you nowhere. The men are speaking up. I studied Trump and followed his plan with real estate. What's up, Benjamin? Roosevelt. An OG told me to ask for what you want from a woman and tell her the truth and she will love you long time. Men or women who do this are the best salespeople. Bam. Uh, Randy George, get her talking about herself. Women got egos too. Then let her really, then tell her, I really like you. Want to go back to my place and screw. Works about two out. Randy knows the process. Works about two out of five times. Cedric, I just finished reading uh, Chet Holmes' book. Absolutely fantastic. The Ultimate Sales Machine. I'm telling you, it's a great book. Books for a Better Life. Had one of those girls. <laughs> Uh, John Francis, do you think anybody who worked for Trump had plans on creating wealth? I'm going to say a strange thing. I'm going to say yes, because when you are hanging around certain people, like I'll, I'll mention Michael Shannon. He was the owner of Rental Crate. Just being around this dude, because Michael was a teacher. And, you know, once he starts talking, then he goes straight into instructor mode. And it's like, this is how you do it. We were at a trade show, right? And I'm just talking. And I'm talking about this girl I'm dating, and he just starts giving me advice, and it's like, maybe that's a shit test. You know, I've never heard of a shit test. And a shit test, for those of you who don't know, is when a woman just brings up some outrageous shit just to see if you got a backbone. And I'm like, and, you know, he described it, right? And it's like, how do you know what's happening in my life, strange white man? You're not there. He was right. So he was really good about that kind of stuff. So people who are in Trump's, uh, world, I'm quite sure a lot of them became rich. Because one thing about Trump, he's uh, about that opulent lifestyle. And there's, um, I mean, he is. So I'm quite sure there's a bunch of people in the camp got rich, created wealth, because Trump was a product of generational wealth. Donald Trump started out richer when he was a little wee bitty egg in his mother's womb. He was already rich. He had already had millions of dollars and he was just, he was, even, before he, even before he got in the fallopian tube, when he was still up in the ovaries, he was rich. A lot of us will never get there where he started off. 
Home Depot loves being the place all the time. They're funny. Trump is a motherfucker that knows how to land a gut punch. He delivered constant gut punches to people who were hungry for his message and capitalized. He is a motherfucker. Oh, you're the best storyteller. Oh, there's more story times coming back. That's maybe one of the new things. Maybe Glendon after dark. What's up, Mo Watts? Uh, Mr. Safety Forever. Often one generation earns wealth, next generation blows it. Actually, that's not true. Hold on a second. Let me use the wonderful power of Google. I'm going to show you something. Do, 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 do. It's not actually true. Uh, I think the millionaire next door and some other stuff like that was put out there to make poor people feel better about being poor. Nope, 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 nope. It's, it's in. Okay, this might be it. Abigail Johnson. Fidel, yeah, okay. I put Catherine. I was wrong. All right. So I'm going to show you all something. See, when you start studying wealth and get around certain people, you'll find out that a lot of people are spreading stuff that's not real. Here's to educate you, okay? Um, Lakers, he's giving the daughter, you know, she owns the Lakers now. Gave her Johnson Publishing. I think she fucked it up because I think they sold it. Now this one, this is the one. Um, he gave this to his daughter. And she made more money. Uh, Fred Trump gave for Donald Trump the company. He made more money. She made more money. More money. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and the thing is, Fred gave him the company. He's giving it to her. So I don't think she's going to lose money because they all like him. She's going to be rich. And a lot of people don't know the Clintons are rich. Um, Paul Newman gave his daughter Jockey International. Yes, that's underwear. Jockey underwear. Yep. That business is still running today. L'Oreal. So I, I do this stuff because, you know, my goal here is to give y'all an education, tell you things that other folks won't tell you. Uh, it is absolutely fundamentally not true that most people who have massive wealth give it to the second generation, they completely fuck it up. Why? Because people with math, massive wealth and intelligence puts it where the kids can't get the money. And if there's a person in the family who can run stuff like with the Walmart family, they'll get somebody. If a woman knows you're on your game, you're in. Let's see uh, what we got here. <laughs> I just spent with money with you. Why the hell I spent all that money with college? Uh, the course is a self-study, so no, we don't go back and forth on questions because that's called a consult. So, no. Inside the Josh mind, you're an amazing man. Listen to you every day. Never caught you on live, though. Awesome. Appreciate it. Welcome to the family. Big short. 50% of the country hates Trump's not me. He got me where I am. Hey, I've made $26,000 since he's been elected. He's my bitch. He's my favorite bitch right now. Down bitch, down bitch. Where can I see some of your literature? Uh, some stuff's on Amazon. More stuff's coming. Uh, Bush did not go through blowing the money his grandfather made him. Nope. I mean... You, you see this because a lot of this stuff, like the millionaire next door, is to play. It's like religion. It's like financial religion. It's to placate you that someday possibly you could get that, so you don't go out and kill the folks with money. That's honestly, that's my honest opinion. Uh, let's see. Just put up fathers who gave their daughters to company. You'll find it. I had nothing when I started. Me neither. Uh, Warren Buffett said he would not leave his wealth to his kids. Okay. Let, let's let's just really examine that. So Warren Bell, Warren has all this money, right? And he says he's not going to leave this to his kids, and he publicizes that. Now, why does he put? And Bill Gates has done something similar. Oh, I'm not giving them anything, so they won't be hated, so people won't go after them. It's called a red fucking heron. You gonna think that these folks who love their kids gonna leave them high and dry? Get the fuck out of here. That's propaganda, which we talked about last night. 
I, I'm telling you, don't believe the hype. Don't. Uh, my Angelou's grandson sold the house for five million like a dumbass. There was probably no conversations of wealth building. Glenn, I asked you before, but how do you know if you're putting too much in your plate? Opportunity comes knocking up every day at my door. I'm all over the place with ideas. Hire people. Arthur McClendon, this is great information. Welcome. Glad you're listening while you're at work. Uh, Cody, bought your Pippin Craigslist audiobook. Love it. Thanks for the info. Hey, thanks for buying it. Uh, big sure my dad left his wealth to charity, all three million. I'm telling you, Warren is not doing it. Warren is not going to do it. Bill is not going to do it. And first of all, you got to look at Warren, Bill Gates, and other people. They don't have to leave them money because of the life that they live and the connections they develop by being related to these people earns them millions of dollars. When you all right, um, can I? No, nah, I'm not going to do that because they'll they'll trip. But when you're in the inner circle, you hear stuff like right now on my nextdoor.com. There's someone who's selling a house and looking for a cash buyer, and they didn't post it in regular. Uh, channels because they know that there are people in this neighborhood who could stroke out a check tomorrow it, it's a different ball game i'm telling y'all warren's fucking up remember do this go back in time and watch how warren started these business warren was a motherfucker you think that just left Bush grandfather started with a lawnmower and now they govern two big states like Texas and Florida. Douglas Jones, a nice guy mold. I attracted a facilitating exotic beauty who asked to marry me. She went on to try to hit with me, hit hit me with her new car that I was paying for. A skull he would ball in water. Woo boy. <clears throat> Thank you. It's really empty now, T Pro. Sure, we're glad to help you out. Me and my wife had an argument about the Bill Gates Warren Gates things last night. Okay. There's something that's called misleading misinformation. And if you, I mean, think about this, okay? Look what people do to folks online. They don't even know these people. Um, Gary V, his wife will not let him post pictures of their kids. People are crazy. Uh, people may feel sorry for the staff billionaire kids if Beth and Gates don't really donate with leaving it to them. Many, they don't directly leave the money, but they give them enough while they lie. I mean, I guarantee you that these kids have a trust fund somewhere. I guarantee you. I absolutely guarantee you. And they've been told, if you're ever asked about this, lie and say, dad left me nothing. He wanted me my own man. There's a lot of people who are billionaires and they're not on that list because they've worked hard to keep that shit secret. People come after you when they know you got money. They just do. It's just reality, man. All right, so I'm gonna put this boss, the boss bundle, and I'm gonna actually show it to you. Oh, D. Hectorates, here's the thing. Warren Buffett's sons are palantrists. How can you give money when you don't have no money? Thanks for throwing that in there. Because, you know, here comes Fred and he looks like a farmer in a truck and he's worth seven bill. You don't know that because you can't research Fred. He ain't all out here saying billions. I got my billion. You don't know. It makes it easier to do deals. There's a lot of blacks who don't want to be on the list. Either. There's like billionaires in every culture around the world and everybody is not like I. And there's people on that list who asked them to take them off because they knew that they would fuck up their deal making ability. They didn't want to be on that list. My, I've always said it. I would rather be rich than rich and famous. Rich and nobody knows. You can do so much more. Y'all know the speech. Share this video with someone you care about. Put it on your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. 